Welcome to Mindsframe, Ubisoft Studio Minds. Today with Basti. It's and me. <laughs> it's absolutely nice to be here. Sorry. Uh, I think we should do this. Uh, 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 are you willing, Dirk, to, to join me on yeah. every future episode to just do the intro? Actually, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so what, what are we doing here, Basti? So Mindsframe is our game, developer po uh, game development podcast of yeah. the studio where we basically share development insights about the daily work at Ubisoft Minds. So it's not really aimed at, let's say, uh, gamers and more to other game developers out there. Yeah. And I thought it is a cool idea to have you as a creative director on this show to talk about everything creative direction because you have quite some experience, right? Uh, hopefully. Um, yes, I've, I've been in the industry for a few years. Um, How many? And actually I was cheating. Um, I, I watched a few episodes already, so I know what ah. this is all about, of course. Um, yeah, I've, I've been in the industry, so it's not 20 years, it's I think roughly... 18 years, okay. something, or 17, 18 years, something like that. Which is especially um, for this industry a lot. Yeah, I know. I, I stumbled into the industry uh, 2002 by accident. So I was uh, working for um, for a, a local TV station okay. here in Mainz. Um, and uh, then a friend of mine who also stumbled into the industry by accident uh, told me, like, I work at this strange company in Mainz and they, they are creating video games. And they're looking for some kind of uh, lead designer. And I think that's the perfect, the perfect uh, job for you. And I said, well, how, how should this be the perfect job? Because I have no experience. So I was not part of a demo scene or like a programmer working on my own games. But um, yeah, he said like, no, no, no. Actually, I started working there. And um, I really know that this would be the, the right thing for you to do. So please apply. And I did that, and and I that was uh, Ubisoft Minds at the time called Related Designs. Yeah. So it's a few years ago, but um, and then I said, well, okay, let's see how long I will stay here, and now it seems <laughs> forever. So you basically, you you went there to the porch, ring the door, was like. Hello, my name is Dirk. I am your future game designer. Actually, I didn't want to apply because um, I was already at, at signing a contract okay. uh, for the TV station to uh, stay there like for th a three years contract or something like that, two or three years contract. And, um, and I was just about to sign it, but my friend said, no, 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 this is much better. Yeah, this is much better. Uh, please uh, go there and be, and become a game designer. Also, I work there too, and it would be kind of cool if we could work that Hang together. out together. <laughs> yes, but um, then he left a few uh, months later, um, but uh, I stayed there. Uh, so it was really like, oh, let's see what it is all about. So it was more just like curiosity and fun. And then I got the job. <laughs> so... Game designer for a strategy game, I guess, yeah. because related design back then was also focused mainly on RTS yes. games, right? S yes, back in the time it was mainly RTS games, so uh, they had released America, mm -hmm. which was uh, quite a huge success uh, during that time, uh, related to Age of Empires. Um, it was uh, in the Wild West, and um, it was a fresh setting at the time, and um, I think it was quite a success. And then they were w working on a, a second part called No Man's Land, mm -hmm. as well as a medieval um, RTS game called Castle Strike. And at the time I joined, but I was working on an action RPG, ah, okay. the next Diablo killer. But actually it was never released, uh, but it was fun to work on that. It was called The Ancients. Have we ever talked about this in the past? I think so, but you forgot it. Mindstream exclusive. Then it is a Mindstream <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> I think so. It was it was real fun to work on that, and it was the first time I, I came in contact with the industry. Uh, but actually, um, the publisher uh, um, from that days, uh, so he went broke, so we never uh, created that game. Which publisher uh, was it back then? CDV, I, I think, C a German publisher, CDV. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah I yeah, remember. Yeah. Okay, and. Um, yeah, so then I started to work uh, on finishing uh, No Man's Land, working on the campaign and everything. And so, yeah, I got into it and I really felt like, yeah, my friend maybe was right. This is a cool thing to do. And um, maybe um, I also I, I can help a little bit, um, even though I'm not that experienced. And so I really got into it and it was really uh, super fun and, and I was super happy to have that opportunity. Uh, yeah, and then already a few years later, like, uh, 2004, um, Anno War came around the corner, right? 
So they told us to <laughs> to create an Anno game um, with war mechanics. It's, it's a little bit like a Doom piece. Um, but uh, yeah, we worked on that. Um, but then also they said, you know what, forget about the Anno War thing. Uh, we want you to do the third uh, Anno game because there was a transition to 3D. Also, it was a little bit at the end of this huge RTS craze, right? When yes. everyone and his mom did an RTS. It was like oh, more right. in the, in the yeah. end wake of that. Yeah, you're right. And it was like like a swan song. So they, it was just about to collapse. And you were right. There were a lot of action RPGs at the time and a lot of RTS games. And then it started to collapse somehow. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was just about the right time to shift then to um, a building game, a strategy building game. And uh, that was the Anno series. It already had two editions out, but they were 2D. And that's why I think Sunflowers uh, came up uh, to tell back then related designs, hey, you can do a game in 3D, so why not create an Anno game in 3D? So, and it turned out hiring, uh, uh, jumping on this ship yeah. here turned out to be a, a good idea. Yeah. If we uh, uh, think about the success of the, the Anno series, especially the latest installments. Uh, when, like from a game designer, I mean, this is quite a story of you had to obviously grow into that oh, position, yeah, I mean, have an op like, a, like a previous Started as, as lead designer uh, for the first couple of years. So on Anno 1701 and 1404 and the beginning of 2070, I had the role of a lead game designer. And then when was the transition to more, I guess, strategic part of the creative direction? Or was it? No, actually not, because um, it was just a different name. Because the problem was before we didn't have that role. So there was no uh, creative director. Okay. So actually nobody was taking care officially um, uh, on these topics. Um, and so it just fell into my lap so uh, if you care about this stuff you you seem to um, feel connected to these kind of topics so can you deal with it so we were a small team so everybody had mul had multiple roles how and big was it back then back then we created i know games with maybe 40 people in the core wow, team okay. and then w when we were close to finish it and when we had to create a lot of content But it was less than 100, even in the highest, uh, with the highest peaks. So you went from all of a sudden lead game designer to surprise creative director. Yeah, actually, um, I was our uh, our uh, studio head um, also at that time, also nowadays, uh, Potty uh, had to talk me into it. So it was his idea. Uh, looking back, I think uh, it, it was a good idea. But back then I felt like, no, I feel super comfortable where I am and I don't want this new title. I want to stay in touch more with the team because I really enjoyed also like building up and um, guiding a design team. Uh, because back then you didn't have so many uh, skilled designers that you were able to hire, especially as a small company. So we had to kind of create our own brand uh, of, of designers and mm -hmm. our own take on game design. And this was super fun. But he said, yeah, but it's easier to find a replacement uh, as a lead designer than finding somebody who's able to take care of the creative direction stuff. So I want you to do it. And he insisted on it. And so I said, okay. He's a wise man, so I will just follow the advice. But there, there's some, some, some actually quite interesting topics you, you brushed um, or you touched with that yeah. creative direction. Because first, you grew into that and there was a need in the team. But it also gives the impression that for every kind of like project, creative director first can mean something different. Yeah. Second, um, the question is, do you need to have that strong connection to the DNA of a game as you had uh, mm. with the Anno series. We're thinking about big AAA productions where maybe hiring a creative director mm. which has no prior connection to that brand. And, but well, that's maybe for, for a little bit later, maybe we want to touch the, the first two topics first. How do you see the creative director in a sense of, are you an empowering role or should you, especially as a, as a senior, be an empowering role Or how important is it still to have your personal hands on or to, to give the reins away? This is a lot of questions. Yeah, Basti. let's start with the first one. <laughs> a lot of deep questions. Um, yeah, um, yeah. maybe we can, we can start with the first one, but now my head sticks with the third one, so you have to repeat it. <laughs> What was the first one? Ah, about the different roles, right? Yeah. Yes, actually, I think you kind of gave the answer to yourself a little bit already because... Uh, 
that would be my approach. It's since it's a very uh, let's say a strategic role inside the team, uh, the creative director. It can be interpreted in many different ways. So there is not one answer like what or is a creative director or what does he do. So um, when I had a little time, I was starting a little pet project where I tried to interview all creative directors within Ubisoft because they are all in different studios. I'm listening. Yeah, and, and there's many of them, so many studios mm -hmm. and also many creative directors. And so I started, actually it's not finished by now, but I interviewed roughly, I think, around about 20. And because I, I wanted the, the also like a little bit like their experience, their knowledge, and, and see like is there a pattern to creative direction, at least um, across Ubisoft. And even inside Ubisoft, it turned out that there's quite a variety of um, different takes on that role. Like what's a creative director? As you said, like is he really attached to the brand um, or maybe an, an outsider giving advice from the outside or is it a hands-on person creating content in a way or is there um, really like guiding the team, being responsible for parts of the team or more an outsider challenging the team. Like there's a lot of different takes to that. So my personal take is obviously coming from the previous role as a lead game designer. So it's strongly influenced by that. And also maybe a little bit influenced uh, by um, the kind of um, topics that I'm interested in, which is, um, as you know, to a large degree, uh, statistics. So numbers, data, a lot of designers, they hate mm -hmm. data. They don't like numbers. I like numbers. Um, I think they help, um, but also art. Um, um, I really am I'm, I'm in, into art, uh, like music, architecture, literature, these kind of things. So combining numbers um, with art, and then uh, also on the other side, um, you remember um, I had an attempt to study psychology. So it's also a topic that I'm that I'm related to the human mind and, and how does it work. And I think like gluing that together is a little bit how I would interpret the role. Um, of the creative director. So I think no matter how you interpret it, it should be a person inside um, the studio or the, the team um, that is inspiring the team, also challenging the team, but especially in maybe difficult times, provide um, direction in the yeah. in the very literal sense. So uh, to really help them like, look, I know it's all confusing right now, but we are all marching in this direction. Remember, we all agreed um, to do this, and, and these were the reasons why. And if there's maybe reasons against that, let's discuss and see what, what we do about that. Because we cannot like change our directive every day. We will end up in the desert, dehydrated and uh, out of <laughs> fuel, and so we don't want that. So it's it's like... On one side, encouraging the team to be creative and to come up with solutions and to be engaged, but on the other side, also challenging in terms of, okay, what's our focus? Uh, what do what are we trying to achieve? When is this a, a creative and a successful um, project that we are doing? What, what do we have to do so everybody can be proud of it and, and the players will, will love it in the end? I think that's the role. So a little bit more towards a supervisor or consultant, creative consultant role even for the team or more the hands-on approach? I'm not so much a fan of the hands-on approach for creative direction. I think you should step back and let um, the team do the work. But there's limitations to it uh, in a certain way, uh, not because the team needs it, but also because of your role. It's like if you are too detached from the product or from your craft, or your, so wherever you come from. So creative directors might come from different disciplines. So for example, for me, having a background of uh, design and writing, and uh, as, as, as I described, so it's important now and then, like once in a while during, a, in, in the case of Anno, for example, a three to three and a half years long project, to do something practical that also ends up in the game. Uh, so you don't lose the connection to your craft ship, so you really understand what it means to create content for a game. Um, mm -hmm. So this is like an exercise not to lose, um, not to be de uh, totally um, de detached from it and, and to, to lose the feeling. Um, and also for the team, it's important because if they see that like, 
this old guy can still yield his sword, you know, um, uh, not only talk, but like he can lead us into battle. <laughs> you know, it's like it builds trust. And also the people see like, oh, it's not only talking. So uh, I don't know. He can uh, do some things that even would help us out uh, uh, now and then. I think that's also important. But it's on the other side, keep your hands away from what the team does. Like, don't go into all the details and try to interfere everywhere. Give the people the trust and the, the freedom to express themselves, to contribute. This is even more important, uh, obviously. So don't stand on their feet uh, too close to them. Perfect segue, because if you think about like uh, the, the different generations of game developers, and, and you go back to the to the big uh, first uh, yeah. uh, usually guys uh, back then, uh, I talk about uh, Warren Spector, Peter Molyneux, uh, all these folks. Uh, Ken Levine uh, was even like you could argue a generation later. A lot of them became kind of like. Uh, the 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 Olymp of of uh, mm. game designers, game directors, uh, creative directors, etc. Very 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 strongly attached to the brand. And yeah. as you said, can I can I still hold the saber and go yeah. into battle? <laughs> Many of them tried later on with confidence, though, yeah. to rekindle that kind of like success they had in the past. And to be honest, not every one of them, most of them actually did not manage to do so. Yeah. Still, we're living in a world where you have some faces. Uh, behind a brand or a game or a game series or even a studio attached to it. I'm talking about people like Kojima, who is so connected to that that almost you, nobody talks about the actual game development studio, mm. people behind that, uh, people like Kojima, notorious for having their hands in almost every aspect of the game, mm. being very strict with their ideas and basically uh, using the, the development team to just execute all their ideas. So mm. it feels a little bit more... Um, they are in charge, but not really empowering, mm. uh, which still seems to be the case with a lot of uh, these, uh, let's say, big big names. So you would say, is it sometimes needed, or would you say this is a direction we should move completely away from in the industry itself? Oh, no, I would never say that you should move away from th something totally um, in terms of creativity, because like different games or different companies or different teams, they all have different needs. And um, to create a, a certain kind of game, um, maybe you need, for example, to, to pull the strings on everything. I mean, there are some very successful games out there uh, that sold millions that were done by only few or even just by no. one person. And this has also something to do then with the whole creative vision and execution being in the hands and minds of one person. And I think um, that makes sometimes total sense. It's a little bit like if you compare uh, in cinema a movie production that is like a big Hollywood blockbuster where it's not so much about the director and then a movie by Stanley Kubrick. Like both of them serve different mm -hmm. purposes and have a different approach. Um, I wouldn't say that one is right and the other is wrong. It's, it's really what you want to achieve. I think the, what would be bad if... Um, if you mix it up not knowing what you want to achieve. And I think this is where creative direction comes in, right? So if you're creating a Hollywood blockbuster and you think like, oh, but Stanley Kubrick, he was such a great director, let's put him on the next Avenger movie and see what what will happen, you know? And most likely this is not a perfect fit uh, that would not serve, but maybe it would, yeah? So uh, it depends on your strategy, but actually I don't think so. So it, it's really important that you know what are you aiming at. And, and this is also the team, like... Is there a team uh, and also what it's trying to craft that is more um, like a, a strong collaboration spirit? Or is it like like you said, like the vision of one person that has to be somehow executed and everybody's looking to that person like, okay, what do you want? What What is this crazy thing that we don't understand, but but you're able to tell us and then something super extraordinary comes up? That's also possible, but... At least from my experience, especially with computer games, it's always a team effort. So I'm more to the to the team side of things. So I think it's um, it's important um, sometimes to remind um, of the road that we wanted to take and where it leads. But after all, it's really all about the team effort. If if people don't understand, like why are we marching even into that direction? I, I don't get it. I think it's a bad idea. Um, the last water well I saw was was in the opposite direction, and then this is bad. So you should 
have a good answer to somebody like that. You should not shut them down like I explained it already three times and just follow me, no. believe me, everything will be fine. Maybe there is a point in production where you have to do this, but it's never good. Uh, it's always better if people have understood or if you take your time to explain or you have also to ask yourself as a creative director, did I everything to explain it so everybody's able to understand it or is it maybe my problem because it's always uh, good uh, also to challenge yourself if people are not into what you say like ask yourself is what i want is it does it make sense mm -hmm. am i right maybe they are right and so you should you should have a dialogue um And, and talk to especially the experienced people or the people that have a very specific knowledge. It could also be very junior people uh, that come up with great ideas or with some great feedback. It's, it's not only about seniority, but obviously the bigger the team becomes, the harder this gets, right? So we'd say in, in our game dev world and even the future, there's still room and space for uh, Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding, but maybe not for uh, Hideo Kojima's Assassin's Creed. <laughs> But Hideo Kojima still has to rely on the talent of a really, really good team yes, to make absolutely. great games. That's, I think that's a good summary. <laughs> Thank you, Basti. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I, I think that. So there's, there's room for a lot of different games. Um, I mean, the industry is becoming bigger and bigger. Games are super successful. And there's so many different games out there. So the whole uh, game world is uh, more and more diverse with, with its genres and the kind of stories it tries to tell. And also with the way how games are created and how they are brought to the player. Perfect. To be honest, ending on a high note, I have one final question for you, Dirk. Sure. I mean, we could usually maybe a second, third season uh, Minds Frame or... Uh, I'd, I'd need another coffee then, same but... For me. Um. <laughs> Last question for you. Yeah. I try to, to make a very, very straightforward okay. question because I tend to, you know... Would you rather work in, in the future on a very, very big game with unlimited resources or a small game with unlimited creativity because of like a un, you could pick your super team of creative minds to work on a smaller game or you get a lot of money to create the biggest blockbuster actually uh, i'm i'm not part of the bigger is better crew mm -hmm. so my answer would be without having to think about it uh, i would choose the the smaller game that is maybe more creative But also for me, it's like creativity itself is also not um, um, excluded from size. From yeah, that and also it's not like um, if a game that's super creative can also be super bad, you know. So creativity in itself is not like oh, it's creative. That means it's a good game. No, it's more to that. If it would be that easy, uh, you could also I don't know let. Uh, um, Uh, let let a small child lead the uh, development. Uh, maybe they have the the craziest and best ideas. Yeah, but um, so what I'm trying to say is like creativity is super important, um, and I would like to do a small uh, creative project. But it's also not creativity for creativity's sake. You but, need direction, uh, direction and a purpose. Okay, a purpose. I think that's important um, to have a purpose. Well, thank you, thank you, Dirk, for being here. Thank you, as Mike's. always. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, thank you all for watching. Um, as always, if you have any feedback or would love to tell us what you would see next in a future episode of Minds Frame, let us know. It was a pleasure to be here. My name is Bastian Thun and I see you next time. Bye.